you know, we all know that corporate giving and philanthropy are being completely shifted in this moment. And I think a really interesting place to start this conversation is with Sandra, because your title is head of product and you run an engineering team. And so, and this is all within the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. So tell us why a philanthropic organization has a head of product and engineering team. Yeah, definitely. So the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative uh, is a new type of philanthropy. Uh, our mission is to advance human potential and just as importantly, to promote equal opportunity. For us, we have three focus areas. That's education, science, and opportunity and justice. Um, and there's two things about the type of philanthropy we want to create that um, are a little bit different. The first is we are really long-term oriented. We want to have impact that is looking out 25, 50 years out there because there are some big challenges that we face um, as a country, as a world, that we think someone needs to make those big investments uh, to see that new future. The other part that's unique for us is just really trying to bring together a, a very interdisciplinary team of experts because it doesn't really matter sort of what disciplines, uh, we, there are best practices that we can bring to the table to help solve these problems. And so for us, one big piece is technology. Um, I lead the technology team. And what we're focused on are what are ways to bring technology tools for the people who are actually making change out there. So we build tools for teachers to help them really meet children where they are. We build tools to accelerate science uh, for researchers. Can you give us an example of a tool specific one? Yeah, more specifically. So uh, on the education side, we are building software that helps teachers really have a better sense of where a child is. As I mentioned, we talk about it as personalized learning. And if you think of a teacher in a classroom with 30 kids, it's hard sometimes to know where is every child really at? Did they actually understand that particular concept or are they you know, struggling with something? And so as we build software, we're providing data and just more visibility for teachers to help them be better teachers. And just to fully understand how the model works, you give that technology away. Yes, we're building the software and we are uh, working with different schools to, to share that software with people. Um, but that's one piece. Other pieces include traditional philanthropy and giving. Um, we're trying to bring all these different tools together uh, to really support the change we want to see. Great, great. Now, Anna at Goldman, mm -hmm. you're taking a slightly different approach. I mean, What's interesting there is you're starting to use philanthropy as a recruitment and retention tool. What does that look like? Sure. Um, at Goldman Sachs Gives, what we've been, um, one of our major initiatives, we really saw that um, in the millennial generation, um, and, and by and large, even at people at more senior levels too, community engagement is something that you want to bring and see it in your company. Um, I think as we've talked over the years about bringing your whole self to work, and maybe in the early days that was used with um, different, whether you're a working mom or part of the LGBT community, whatever it might be, but now I, I really see bringing your whole self to work is also that community-mindedness that you have at home, you also expect it now in your employer. So one of the initiatives, for instance, that we have run out of Goldman Sachs Gives for the last two years, we call it our Analyst Impact Fund competition. And it's really for our, our next gen employees. So our younger employees are invited to organize into teams with their colleagues, their peers, um, and this is a global, ini global initiative, and then apply to win a grant from Goldman Sachs Gives. And they get to present to our senior most management and so these are you know, 22, 25 year olds or so that in the end, after pulling together their presentations, present to our CEO or CEOs in our top management committee. And it's been just a fantastic culture building tool at the firm um, and also something that when we look at the data, it actually has shown that people who have participated in this initiative tend to stay longer at our company. So we actually are now seeing the data that this is something that is creating stickiness with the kind of people that we want to see at, at Goldman Sachs. And I, I did want to take the moment to plug, um, I know a lot of you might not be in philanthropy as a part of your job, but whether you're founding companies or working with colleagues, um, you can have an effect on creating these kinds of initiatives or getting the word out at your company. What we'd like to see with this competition is actually make it global and 
pull all the winning teams from different companies who run similar competitions, and then we, Goldman Sachs Gives, will start to fund a larger um, next-gen impact award um, globally next year. And so if any of you are interested, please do find me this afternoon, and we've created a toolkit, hopefully, so you can make it really easy for you to unroll this at your companies, hopefully, next year, if you're interested in, in running a similar type of competition. Great. So, Kim, for you, I mean, a lot of the work you do started organically with your users. How did it begin? Um, so our um, signature initiative is our Open Homes platform, which allows our hosts to sign up and offer their homes for free to people in need. Um, and the idea sparked from one of our hosts who was in Brooklyn um, in the wake of Hurricane Sandy, which was five years ago, believe it or not. And um, she contacted us, um, said my ne neighborhood wasn't impacted at all, but you're making me charge. I want to help people for free. Um, so we we told the anti-fraud guys they had to work overnight and come up with a different way um, and, and um, to prevent fraud but allow people to list for free. And since then, we've activated the tool over 90 times. As you can imagine, this fall has been incredibly busy for us. Um, and more recently, we looked at ways to um, offer this up in, as a way to help with ongoing issues. Um, and as a global platform, a global community, the first issue that bubbled to our radar was the refugee crisis. Um, and so we're, we're now working with various NGO partners um, around the world to find um, short-term housing options for refugees as they're resettling in their new communities. And again, the stories are just so powerful. You, you were a community-driven platform, and when you see the power of what one person does to help someone, it's amazing. We had a host in Dallas, um, a, um, a host in Iraqi family after the travel ban, um, in January, she got her entire temple involved. They ended up raising enough money for the family to buy a car, got them connected with the best schools, and now, you know, this it's like the best possible way for this family to be set up for success in the States. And you just realize when you can do that at scale, it's a very powerful thing. So we're always looking, our, our, you know, we're looking, our community is so generous, and we just want to provide more tools um, to tap into that. And, and similarly to Anne's point, the, the employee piece is incredibly important. Um, I think Air Airbnb is known as a mission-driven company. It, it just inherently has a lot of purpose. Um, we just completed our annual employee engagement survey and 91% of employees said they were proud of the work that Airbnb does to help um, communities in need. And I think as the millennial workforce grows in size, it, it's just it's, it's a really important thing to take note of. And, and there are ways to em embed this into all sorts of day-to-day -day activities regardless of what team you're on. So we're clearly in a highly politicized environment. How do you decide what issues you are going to engage with and which you're going to stay away from? And Kim, maybe you can start. And Anne, I'd love to hear Goldman's perspective, too. Yeah, I think we'll, yeah, I'm imagining everyone will say we're nonpartisan, but there, it's very clear um, at times, for example, we're a travel company. And when things like travel bans get instituted, it's problematic. <laughs> so, um, so we, uh, you know, that was a, just a very clear moment where it made a lot of sense for us to speak out, and then also back that up with um, a, a really significant commitment. Um, and in January this year, that's when we um, pledged to house 100,000 displaced people over the next five years through our hosts and the Open Homes platform. But, you know, I think, I, I think there's, this, uh, there's a variety of issues um, being discussed at the global level today that impact diversity and inclusion. And um, if you're not um, addressing those issues in a proactive way, people take notice. And um, it's just, you know, it, for us, we, um, we engage on issues that really matter to our mission of, of, of belonging. We too at Goldman, it really is about, as a professional services firm, what resonates with our people and what resonates with our business. And I think all of us in this room know of the link between diversity and innovation, and you need both to feed one another. And so 
Um, many of our um, grantees have been around that issue of, of promoting diversity um, in the education space. As well, we've done um, significant grant making around need-based financial aid to ensure that um, our colleges and, and people who are moving through colleges are, are um, of a diverse backgrounds, and we see that amongst our clients then too. Um, and I think where we're now looking to take that as the workforce is changing and as technology is changing the workforce, what can we do then in, in terms of apprenticeships um, and other opportunities? So I think there's um, new areas of funding and philanthropy that are coming to bear by the nature of the changing um, workforce and needs. So. so is there an issue that Goldman just won't touch or go near? Um, there's probably several. Um, <laughs> But you know there is no shortage, sadly, in this world of things that we can all help out with. So um, right now I'm particularly interested in the opioid crisis and um, we're evaluating and looking at ways um, in which maybe that could be a play for us there. Um, uh, criminal justice reform, we're, we're, we've been doing some, some grant making in that area. So there's just endless amounts of, of opportunity and the other thing that I think is particularly interesting right now in, in the sort of nonprofit space when we're working with these organizations is quite a number of them could have been for profits. Um, and I, I'm sure you're running into this too. I mean, a, an organization I just met with um, last week, Quill, and, I, um, and they help improve writing skills um, and they largely deploy their software in um, public schools and um, obviously the most needy public schools. And I said to the founder, you, you could be, I mean, an investment banking client of ours um, as an ed tech company. And it was just this founder wanted to have social impact. Um, but I'm seeing that in many nonprofits these days. I think it's, um, I've been in philanthropy now a couple decades. And from when I got into it after college to now, it's, it's a very different world. It's a real shift. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions in a second. But I want to stay on this technology theme, Sandra, and ask you first. You know, we do have these new tools, right? How can we measure effectiveness? Are we are we doing a good job at that? Are we making sure that we're really putting our dollars to good use? That's definitely a question that we're asking uh, at Chan Zuckerberg, and we're really early. Like we're barely two years old as an organization. Um, but one of the pieces, and I'll talk to people about this a lot. It's not just bringing technology software to the table, it's actually bringing business best practices, which is like looking at data, setting goals, uh, iterating and learning fast. And so internally we're looking at how do we measure the things we're working on, especially because they're so long term, right? And we wanna make sure we uh, are, are tracking and making sure we're investing our time, our resources, our engineering talent um, against problems that are gonna have the most impact for people. Um, so I think one piece of it is just the mindset of making sure that that is okay to bring to the table in philanthropy, even if the outcomes are gonna be harder to measure um, or you're gonna have to look at proxy metrics along the way, um, it's still an important uh, tool to bring to these problems. Do we have any questions in the audience? We have one over here. If you could just wait for the mic. And tell us who you are. Hi, Elaine from Cisco. I'm very curious for Anne or any other member of the panel, um, how you integrate pro bono into your organization and uh, does it connect to employee engagement, employee development? Yes. Um, we do quite a lot of um, pro bono at Goldman, and it's often um, divisionally run. Um, the legal department, for instance, um, I know a number of my colleagues who are lawyers are doing work with um, women who are um, escaping sexual violence. Um, we've done quite a lot with veterans and that type of thing. So um, there's, there's many opportunities for pro bono work, and volunteerism is something that's encouraged. Um, and actually noted on your um, performance reviews even. So um, pro bono opportunities are something that we, that we very much um, like to encourage amongst our people. Great. Do we have any other questions from, oh, we've got one back there. If you could just wait for the mic. Hi there, Megan Battalion with Global Good and Intellectual Ventures. I'm curious if you could clarify if your efforts are primarily domestic or if you're also looking to go international with these efforts. Do you guys all just want to quickly answer that? Yeah. Sure, we're definitely international. We are one of um, the first donor advised funds to do international grant making. So um, 
our grant making, we probably, by and large, I would say our, um, what's interesting, 60 to 70 percent of our grant making is to U.S. 501c3s. However, so many of those organizations are working on the refugee crisis, wherever it might be. Or, so the reach, when we look at it, um, at our most recent tally, we've touched sort of 82 countries. But I think that the actual grant making has been um, to less than that for us. Uh, for us, most of our issues are domestic, uh, but there are a few areas, for example, in accelerating science that is really a global effort. Uh, there are scientists all over the world uh, working on things, so that ha definitely has a global reach. Uh, we've also made some investments, uh, for example, an organization called Andela, uh, actually a for-profit organization that we've made a venture investment in, where they're training up engineers uh, to meet basically global demand uh, for software engineering. And so there's some aspects that are international, but I would say by and large right now the focus is a little more domestic. And at Airbnb, we have hosts and listings in 191 countries, so we are also looking at global challenges that people can address in a hyper-local way in their neighborhood and communities. Um, but, um, you know, it, for us, um, we really focus on ways that we could help in a totally unique and authentic way um, and um, housing families and need housing and uh, families in crisis um, is, is our primary focus, um, regardless of where it's happening in the world. Do we have any other questions from the audience? No, okay, I wanna ask, you know, especially for you, Kim, how do you talk about the work that you're doing in a way that doesn't undermine sort of the goodwill you're creating? So is this stuff that we should just kind of be doing under the radar because we feel good about it, or should we really be, you know, I don't wanna say marketing it, but, but how do you think about that as a company? Yeah, it's a good question, and it's something we're incredibly thoughtful about. Um, you know, right now for us, our, the most important thing we can be doing is um, advocating new people to sign up as open home hosts and uh, to open their homes for free to families in need. And really, the best way to convince them is to hear from other hosts who've already done it about um, the sense of purpose it gave them and why they're continuing to do it. So all of our efforts revolve around making sure um, people are hearing from our hosts directly uh, about their experiences and what that's meant for them and their families and their neighborhoods. Great. I also think Thanks. on that note that um, for, for those of you who are in startups or, or are founding your own companies, um, one of the things that I find interesting when I go to corporate philanthropy gatherings specifically is occasionally you'll see the philanthropy team sitting in HR or legal or marketing. Um, and what I actually have always really loved about being at Goldman Sachs is that um, they've sat us in the executive office as our own team reporting um, into the CEO of the firm. And I think that that shows the priority and um, the focus that we, that we give on this as its own business unit with our own sort of measurable um, reporting lines that we have. And, um, and as you're thinking of how you want to embed this in your company, um, giving it its own home like that is, I think, a great first move. Um, sure, it's connected to things like HR and that type of thing, but I, I think it, there's great value in having it be um, it's standalone group. Great. So give give it its own home. Oh, terrific. Okay. Well, on that note, we have to end. But thank you so much to our panel. Thank you. Thank you.